friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Lexi and today we're doing a whipping chat. Whip stands for work in progress. And so this video is just a chance for us to work on our whips and have a little chat. I'll tell you how I'm doing. You tell me down in the comments below how you're doing. Tell me what you're working on. Tell me what happened this week. And yeah, I'll share what happened this week with me. I'm working on Jeremiah Kettner's The Great Big Owl, and I'll pop a little picture up in the corner somewhere so that you can see what the actual artwork looks like. This is from Diamond Art Club, and I am diamond painting this for an event that is being hosted by my friend Bree. Her channel is called Painting with Pities. I'll link her down below. Uh, she's doing a diamond um, painting event for Jeremiah Kettner, who is... An artist who has uh, lots of different diamond paintings out there um, and so yeah so that's what I'm working on I have a couple of accessories here that I'm using same stuff from last week I have a drill tray from Nix's notions which I'm loving this tray right now it's like my favorite tray I have a pen from peachy keen pens my absolute favorite pen of all time I have another pen from, I'm going to say it wrong, I know it, even though I looked it up last time. Say, <laughs> say, Beau de Toi? De t no. I say it wrong every time. I looked it up last week so that I could put it on the screen. I'll look it up again and I'll put it on the screen and I'll link them down below. I have some Pity Putty, uh, Painting with Pities. I have that in my multi-placers, and then I have glue dots in my single placer. I have a trinket tray from my own store, LexiSparkleCraft.com. Just got some tweezers and stuff here. Uh, I have a little drill, t um, trash drill tray here to put my icky drills in that I'm not going to use. And this uh, set of containers for the drills is from Amazon and I will link this down below as well. So I think that's everything I'm using. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this since last week, which is pretty good for me because I'm a bit of a slower diamond painter. Um, so I've actually made some pretty good progress. So let's see, we're working on this beautiful purple color. Uh, let's see, we're working on H, the symbol H. So, so I've had a pretty good week. I am still on the mend after my surgery. And um, the only thing, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. The only thing is I can't sit for too long. So if you see a cut in here somewhere, it's because I got up for a while <laughs> and then came back. Um, so I did have to cancel my live stream for last Thursday just because I just, I just knew I wouldn't be able to sit for very long. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take some time and just continue to recover. I also can't lift anything too heavy. Uh, so just not back to 100%, but I feel fine. Now, I did, however, get a little bit of a stomach bug over the past week. Um, so that has been a bummer. Um, you know what? I don't think I'm in frame here. I'm not. <laughs> there we go. So I did have a little bit of a stomach bug, uh, which was not great, didn't make me feel too great, but um, I'm, I'm over that now, and yeah, so that's all good. So yeah, I'm feeling good, but thank you everybody who posted very nice comments and get well wishes. I really, really appreciate that. You guys are so nice. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it, and it did help me feel better to know that everybody was thinking of me, and uh wishing good things for me. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. 
So it's been kind of quiet. Otherwise, you know, just I haven't really been able to do anything or go anywhere. So that's probably why I made such good progress <laughs> on my diamond painting. Because I really haven't been able to do a whole lot, but that's okay. It's also gotten a lot colder here. It actually started to snow, and I'm looking outside my window right now, and there's like a few little flurries <laughs> falling down. So, you know, there's really nothing too much going on. So, uh, you know, the dogs are going kind of stir crazy because it's, it's cold outside, and they don't like that very much. And, uh... You know, we haven't been able to sit outside, so, yeah. Uh, I did go to some doctor's appointments last week, and everything is going okay. I had my neuro-ophthalmology exam, which is just like my eye testing exam, and... I am really happy because I had my, I have to go about every six months to have my eyes tested to make sure that they're doing okay. And um, I've talked about it a lot before, so I'll just mention it really, really quickly in case there's like new people watching, but I have a condition called pseudotumor cerebri, which is increased spinal column pressure, and it causes swelling around my optic nerve, and so... I have to go have my eyes tested every six months to make sure that it's not compromising my vision. And usually when I go, like, everything is okay. And she tells me, just keep doing what you're doing. Everything is good. Well, this time when I went, she's like, it's actually better than it was last time. And she's like, your peripheral vision is actually above average. It's better than most people that don't even have like this condition so she's like I don't know what you're doing but you're doing something right so just keep it up so I was like oh that is awesome news because I'm like so freaked out now about my eyes I you know I take it really seriously because I'm like I don't want anything bad to happen to my eyes I you know I need my eyes so that I can do my job I need my eyes so that I can do my crafts and everything like that. So uh, that made me really, really happy that she said it was actually improved and better than where it had been. And it was actually above average. So that was really good. That was good news. Um, I went to see dermatology just as a follow-up for my surgery that I had recently and um, they kind of think that I might have um, like an auto-inflammatory thing that caused what happened um, so I'm looking more into that and I don't know if I mentioned this last week in the whip and chat but my PCP my regular doctor she had she kind of thought that it could be that too and she had recommended that I go on an anti-inflammatory diet um, to help with that in case it, it is that disorder. And there is no, like, test that they can actually do to test. It's more just based on clinical symptoms. So she recommended that I go on an anti-inflammatory diet. So I've been doing a lot of research about that. Now, I previously was doing keto or low-carb and particularly focusing on gluten-free previously, and um, I'm still going to continue to do that. I'm still going to try to focus on like low-sugar, low-carb type stuff, but I've been looking into the anti-inflammatory diet, and um, so something I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my intake of 
fruit and vegetables. So when I was doing keto, I really didn't eat a lot of fruit. I ate sometimes berries, but not very often. But now with the anti-inflammatory diet, like it's a lot of fiber. And so I've been eating a lot of fruit and vegetables. And the other thing is fatty fish, so like salmon. And that's a good thing that I like. <laughs> I really, really like fish, so uh, I've been eating salmon. And there's a few other things, like uh, I think tomatoes are supposed to be really good for the anti-inflammatory diet. And yeah, there's a few things. I'm still doing research on it and like looking at meal plans and things and recipes and things like that. Um, but you're supposed to avoid things that cause inflammation. So like fried foods, which I wasn't eating a lot of fried foods before because we were doing the whole keto thing. Um, but red meat is one of them. So I'm going to not eat red meat as much or pork, and I think dairy is another one you're supposed to avoid. Uh, so yeah. So I've been looking up some different recipes, and this past week I made this really delicious chickpea salad. And I'll actually like pop in a picture right here because it was actually super beautiful. It had chickpeas and different color bell peppers and cucumber and it looked so, uh, like red onion it looked so beautiful and it was really really good so I'll put the recipe down below too if anybody's interested in it it was one that I saw on TikTok and it was so 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 good it was absolutely delicious so yeah so I've been doing that I've just been like looking up recipes uh about a book an anti-inflammatory book and yeah just trying to do that so like my husband is still going to do keto and gluten free because that's really working for him I've said it before but it's really helped him with his allergies and so he doesn't want to change anything and I totally get that I wouldn't want to change anything if I were him either it's really really helped him so there's no need for him to change what he's doing at all so um what I did like this past week was I cooked a bunch of salmon I cooked a bunch of sweet potato um because that was another thing that I read um for like the anti-inflammatory diet and then I cooked like a bunch of asparagus so I kind of meal prepped for myself and then one night I made like a keto beef stroganoff for him and I had my salmon and veggies and potato. And then another night I made like cracked chicken for him, but I didn't want all the dairy. So then he had that and I had um, my salmon. And then another night I made chicken thighs and we both ate that. So like it really hasn't been a burden to like make two different things. And then some nights we eat the same thing. So... Yeah, <laughs> so it's been good. <laughs> um, I did pop in, so before I got my stomach bug, I did pop in to a thrift store one day this week, and I think I'm going to do a little video. I might do it as a member's video, um, a little video of what I got at the thrift store, it was busy though. I don't know if it's because it's like the beginning of the year or what, but it was busy. But y'all, I found some good stuff at the thrift store. I got a beautiful Pyrex bowl, which didn't know that I was looking for that, but <laughs> I found it. Um, it's a beautiful like orange daisy Pyrex bowl from like the 70s. Um, now I don't really collect Pyrex, but I saw it and I was like, oh, I gotta have that. And I got, um, I needed some 
plates to go underneath my plant pots because I didn't have any and I guess I could have gone to like the hardware store or whatever and just got some of those plastic trays to put underneath them but I found some really pretty glass like trays to put under my plant pots and they were only a couple dollars so I got those and they look really pretty and then what else did I find oh I could have kicked myself though I wish I would have got so on one of the shelves they had one of those embosser die cut machines not a cuddle bug but like a similar one and I almost bought it but then I stopped myself because I was like I already have one of those but I feel like maybe one of my crafting friends would have appreciated that and maybe I could have got it for somebody, but I didn't grab it. And then I was like instantly regretted not grabbing it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what else did I get? My mind is blank. I can't think now. Oh, I got like some stuff for junk journaling too. So, Cause I've been into that whole thing. <laughs> I did spend some time making some trays for my shop and I'm hoping to have a new tray release coming out soon hopefully next Saturday which will be the 20th I think January 20th. God you know everybody always says that January it goes so slow and it's like the longest month and it takes forever but I can't believe it's already pretty much halfway through January <laughs> <laughs> wow it really is kind of flying by uh yeah I don't know time has been flying by it is wild <laughs> it is wild so my husband has been uh, working a lot recently. He's got a big project going on at work, so he actually had to work at the weekend and has been staying late, so it's been a little crazy. And so it's just been me and the dogs hanging out. And uh, I don't know, but you know, that's okay because then I can get like some stuff done like you know crafty stuff but also stuff around the house done but I feel bad for him because then he gets home and it's like it's almost time to go to bed and he's he feels like you know stressed out but hopefully that will be over soon I don't foresee that lasting like a super duper long time thankfully I don't know. I'm trying to think if we've like done anything else of note. It's been honestly, it's been such a like slow time just because of like me recovering from surgery and being sick and it's winter. It's just been such a kind of slow, uninteresting time, honestly. <laughs> um Yeah. I really wanted to watch, so I've been seeing commercials for, a, I think, a, not a documentary, but a show or like a series about that girl, Natalia Grace, who was the little girl that was adopted, but then they accused her of actually being an adult who was posing as a little girl. And I went to go try to watch it, but I thought it was going to be on Hulu, but Apparently it's on part of Hulu that I don't subscribe to, and I was not going to pay extra money, <laughs> so I haven't been able to watch that yet, but I'm hoping maybe it, later on it will be on Hulu where I can watch it. I'm trying to think if we've watched any good movies recently. I already told you guys about the Barbie movie. <laughs> oh, I know what I saw. I don't know if this would be interesting to anybody else, but... 
Uh, we recently watched a movie on Netflix called Gran Turismo. And I think it's relatively new. And it's directed by Neil Blomkamp, who is like one of my favorite directors. And it's in, he did like District 9. And it's about, uh, it's based on a true story. How close it is to the true story, I don't know. But it's about how they took, <laughs> I think, I can't remember what car company it was, maybe Nissan. Um, they took gamers who were playing the game Gran Turismo. They took the best players from that game and trained them to be actual race car drivers and it's like based on the true story of that and what happened and I actually thought it was a really good movie my husband did not like it he thought it was dumb but I really really liked it um I thought it was like really interesting and kind of crazy and I can't believe they really did that I can't believe it's based on a true story uh so that was pretty wild <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we watched that recently, and I can't think of any other, we watched one recently with Julia Roberts in it, and it was kind of like a end of the world apocalypse one, but I cannot think of what it was called now, but it was on Netflix, I'm pretty sure. I really cannot think of what it was called. It had Julia Roberts in it, and I think Kevin Bacon was in it. Uh, I was Idris Elba in it? No, I cannot remember now. Whew. That was a while ago that we watched that. I think that was actually before Christmas that we watched that one. I feel like there has not been a ton of like great movies recently I don't know we watched one actually we watched one the other night that was from 2002 and it was called trapped and it had Kevin Bacon in it and it had I think Charlize Theron was in it and it was so it's an older movie but it was so ridiculous the whole premise of it was so ridiculous and um it's a movie about a kidnapping, and I won't say too much, like, just in case somebody is interested to watch it. But the, I don't know if it was just, like, a product of the time, like, this was, like, very early 2000s, but the ending, it was, like, so unbelievable and ridiculous and, <laughs> like, so corny and cheesy and just, like, so unbelievable that it really just kind of <laughs> like ruined it like we were laughing the whole time um at how ridiculous it was and I, it was very I don't know it was kind of funny it might be worth to watch because of how funny it is I don't know <laughs> um but yeah we were struggling to find something to watch and I was like well let's watch this Kevin Bacon is in it <laughs> even though it's kind of an older movie but <laughs> it was funny <laughs> so <laughs> it was just so silly there's I'll just say this it involves a very crazy stunt with a plane is all I will say <laughs> so look at these beautiful fairy dust drills they're so beautiful I love these I wish I could do the whole painting in fairy dust I guess I could if I wanted to but <laughs> I just don't have that many fairy dust drills <laughs> currently. So I really loved reading everybody's comments on my last whip and chat. It feels so good to be back doing whip and chats. Um, but I really, really loved reading everybody's comments and seeing what everybody is looking forward to in 2024. And people had such good answers, you know, for what they're looking forward to in 2024. And there's, like, so many good things going on in the community. Um, like, people getting new houses, people having new grandchildren, 
uh, people getting new pets, getting, you know, getting a new dog, uh, people looking forward to, like, getting in shape, getting, uh, you know, decluttering their house, uh, de-stressing, you know, having less, less stress in their life, um, more togetherness, less division, more peace, uh, just really, really great comments, and I really enjoyed reading all of them. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody who commented and, you know, explained what they were looking forward to or what their goals were in 2024. They were really great to read, so I appreciate that. I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, same things. Uh, well, not buying a house, not, <laughs> or anything like that, but, um... But, I, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to exercise, uh, getting in shape. I'm Actually, somebody had a really good, it was Colette. <laughs> Colette had a great uh, suggestion that maybe for our members, some of our members' chats, maybe we could do like a group walk and we could like maybe do like a, um, I don't know, like maybe a Zoom call or something and we could go for a walk and I'll talk and walk together or something. Um, but yeah, I'm like looking forward to like more time outside and actually I was going to start, I don't know if I said this last time, but I'm going to start tracking how much time I spend outside to make sure I'm spending enough time outside. And I was actually talking to my friend at work and she was telling me, she's like, oh, you know, you need to make sure that like you're not vitamin D deficient and all this stuff. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, I'm sure that I am. I'm sure that I'm vitamin D deficient because especially in the winter time, like I do not spend enough time outdoors and yeah, I'm sure that I am. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I want to like track how much time I have outside and things like that. And so yeah, that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to in 2024 is, you know, exercising, getting stronger, more time outside, doing more diamond painting. I'm so excited for the retreat that I'm going to. Um, I'm going to Shay's retreat, Crafter's Paradise in Texas, which is in May. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to meet everybody who's going. And, yeah, I cannot wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Yeah, I can't wait to, yeah, just work on more diamond paintings, work on my YouTube channel, work on my junk journals. I also want to work on, like, decorating my house. I think I talked about this last year, but... I have some walls in my house that just, like, don't even have any, like, decorations on them and still don't. Part of it is I'm indecisive and I don't know what I want to, how I want to decorate. Uh, and then I get, like, discouraged because I'm, like, I just, I don't know. I have, like, a mental block about it or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so I'm going to work on that again this year. And I want to read more. Definitely want to be less stressed and worry less about things that I just can't even control, you know? This green is like so pretty. It's more of like a gray green, I think. It's really, really pretty. This painting is an absolute joy to work on. I don't know if it's just the colors or what, but I'm absolutely loving working on it. The drills have been really good too. Uh, the drills are good quality. I think it's the colors, though. I think the colors are really making me happy. <laughs> I really love the pinks, the purples, the blues, the teals, the green. Like, it's so pretty. And 
it's not like super duper color blocking, you know, it's more on the confetti side. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying it. So I am on a no buy for diamond painting, however, <laughs> there's always a but, right? I really do want to buy one from Francesca's studio. Um, they have a beautiful one that's called Jade, I think it's called Jade, is it called Jade Dragon or is it just called Jade, or is it called Jade, I forget the name of it, but it's really, really pretty. And I was looking at that one before Christmas, and I was going to buy it, and then it was like, I didn't because I was going out of town, and then, uh, you know, everything happened with my surgery. So, I might buy that one and then go on a no-buy, <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> that one was so beautiful. I love that one, and then they had another one called Gaia that's really, really pretty. Um, so, I might buy one or two of those um, from Francesca's and then go on my no buy. So I had to think about it. <laughs> this is looking so beautiful. I want to decide my next color. I don't know. I think I'm going to do this green color down here. So, so pretty. I love these owls. They're so cute. I definitely, I say this every time with every painting, but I want to frame this one. <laughs> See, and then again, I'm like indecisive though, because there's been several now that I've wanted to frame and hang up, but then I'm like, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> do I want to do that? I guess it doesn't hurt to just frame it, and then if I change my mind, I can take it down. It doesn't really hurt, but I don't know. That's the other thing I need to look at when I go thrifting, is I need to look for frames. That would be a good place to find frames, probably. <laughs> I need to like write down the measurements that I need, maybe. Take a tape measure with me. comments what you guys are working on. Are you doing events or just kind of working at your own pace on something? Also let me know if you know of any good movies or shows to watch because I feel like I'm at a standstill <laughs> on that too. Jeez. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can hear the wind from the outside. It's absolutely crazy. We lost power the other day when it was storming really bad here. So in Illinois, they've had a ton of snow where my parents live. And they've had like school canceled and a couple of snow days. And we didn't really get any snow until just now. But we've mostly had rain. And then I swear I was like starting to see things because I did that whole video on the blobs. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. <laughs> it was in my uh, Mystery Monday video where I was talking about the mysterious blobs that appeared when it started raining in Washington State. <laughs> but then I swear like I was like, it started raining here and I was like, oh my god, I see blobs. <laughs> I see blobs. <laughs> so I have one, hopefully just one more appointment next week uh, with my surgeon. 
And then I think as long as everything goes well, I should be cleared. You know, as long as there's no complications or anything, <laughs> then I should be good. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And then I'm hoping, like, once I'm cleared from, like, my surgeon's perspective, I'm hoping I can start, like, exercising and, you know, back to normal. That would be great. That's all I want. It's just back to normal. Not asking for much. <laughs> and by normal, I just mean, like, my normal, you know, back to my baseline. <laughs> That's all. So I definitely want to start doing my yoga again. That's something that I kind of fell off with like towards the end of the year. It really does help me like even just a few like 10-15 minutes in the morning was really really helping me and I would like to start that up again. Have you guys seen like the goat yoga? <laughs> I talked to somebody, I can't remember who it was, who they actually went and did the goat yoga and they said it was really, really fun but chaotic. <laughs> um, and then I saw, so I, if you haven't heard of it, it's basically where you go and do yoga and there's like little baby goats running around <laughs> and they climb on you and stuff. Um, but then I saw another one where it was puppy yoga and it was literally a yoga class where they had like these little golden retriever puppies jumping around and they were like climbing on people when they were doing yoga and it was so cute and I was like I would definitely do that that would want that would make me want to take a yoga class more <laughs> my husband and I did talk about doing a yoga class together once and I'm not sure why we didn't like pursue it uh we talked about it and I, I don't know we just like didn't do it maybe I'll ask him if he still wants to do that <laughs> that would be fun I don't know I think it's good for like your physical health and your mental health honestly Although, when I try to do... So, I was thinking about, like, the puppy yoga would be fun and funny. Uh, but I was thinking about... So, we used to have a dog named Fridge, who was a pit bull. And uh, he's no longer with us. But he was so funny because I would do the yoga in the morning and he would get up and he would... I couldn't do it if he was, like, up and awake because... He would, like, try to, like, he would, like, try to sit on me <laughs> while I was doing yoga. Like, he would, like, he was, like, oh, it's time to, like, cuddle. And, like, he would try to sit in my lap. He would try to lay down next to me. And I'm, like, I'm trying to do yoga, buddy. And he was huge. He was, like, 120 pounds. So he was not a little puppy. But he would, like, yeah, he would, like, try to sit on me. <laughs> <laughs> he would lay on my yoga mat and just be in my way. <laughs> so I'd have to like try to like do it and like sneak before he would get up and out of bed. <laughs> or I'd have to try to like close him in the room uh, so that I could like do my yoga real quick so that he couldn't <laughs> get in the way. He's so funny. <laughs> He's a funny boy. I could see my other two doing that as well. <laughs> well, I don't know. Not so much Scout. She kind of, like, doesn't bother me uh, when I'm doing stuff like that. But I think Goose, if I didn't have him in his crate while I was trying to do yoga, he would probably try to, like, lay on top of me and get in my way. <laughs> so maybe I'll try it one day when he's not in his crate, though, and see. 
what he does. Funny. So the other thing I've been trying to do more recently, and this is not just like a 2024 thing, but like I was trying to do this like more to in, towards the end of the year as well, was just like trying to let go of this notion that like everything has to be perfect because I would, fr I'm not, I'm not even a perfectionist like at all. Like I'm really not that type of personality, but I think I get hard on myself when I think things aren't good enough. Uh, so I've been trying to really like let go of like the notion that everything has to be perfect all the time and like and that's not I'm not saying like I'm not trying to do a good job on things but just trying to give myself like a little bit more grace and um just trying to let things go <laughs> if it's you, you know even if something's not 100% perfect like it still might still be good <laughs> just like just let it be good you know uh so I've been trying to work on that and like I don't know I guess cutting myself some slack sometimes not being as hard on myself I think I said this in my last video like I want to try to like live a more like gentle life and like maybe more of like a slow have you heard that term like slow living where you're just, you're not, like, killing yourself to get everything done, and, like, so, okay, you know, I was talking about, like, decorating my house, right? So, I think this is a perfect example. So, when you look on social media, and you see, like, certain social media influencers, there are some people that have these perfect, gorgeous homes, right? And they are uh, decorated in, like, the most perfect aesthetic. And it looks so beautiful. And they have all the most perfect decorations. And the home is, like, immaculate, spotless, clean. There's not anything out of place. And I would get caught in this trap of, like, looking at that. And being like, well, I wish my house looked like that. Why doesn't my house look like that? My house never looks like that. I've always got, like, dog hair. <laughs> and, like, you know, that, uh, you know, my, my kitchen is never that organized. And I don't, my house is not decorated like that. And I would, like, be hard on myself, right? And I think that's part of the reason why, like, there's some rooms in my house that aren't even decorated because I'm, like, I can't like get it to look the way that I want it to look and uh it doesn't look perfect like other people's houses look so like comparing myself to other people right and I think I need to let that go <laughs> and just do it how I want it to be not worry about what other people are doing or what other people think I think I just need to let go of that notion that it needs to be perfect. I think I really just need to, like, just let it be mine. Let it just be myself and and not worry about that. I think, and, like, and just be easier on myself and just kind of, like, I don't know, just let it go. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> But I've seen, like, some other people kind of talk about that where it's like, can we just normalize, like, having normal-looking houses? Like, not everything <laughs> has to be, like, super perfect, like it's from, like, a magazine or, you know. I think that's where I'm at. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would love for my house to be, like, super perfect all the time but like I have two big crazy dogs uh that run in and out and mess everything up and my husband and I both work full time and 
you know, I don't have kids, but, uh, you know, we're busy. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes things are going to be out of place. <laughs> My craft room is a hoarder's paradise, I'm not going to lie. It's just not ever going to be perfect. And I just have to let go of that <laughs> and not be so hard on myself. <laughs> And I'm not saying that you can't, it's not that you don't have to improve on things. I'm not saying that at all. Because I'll always try to improve on things. But I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to let it hold me back anymore. <laughs> like, not decorating a room in my house because I'm like, oh, it's never going to be perfect. Like, that's crazy. You know. <laughs> I'm so in love with this picture. It's like hard for me to like stop working on it like once I get in the groove. It's a pretty big picture too. So I definitely think it's going to take me a while. So Bree's event that she's doing runs through January and I definitely don't think I'll be done with this in January just because of like the size of it and I am pretty slow when it comes to diamond painting but I'm going to try to work on it as much as possible. I would love to kit up. So I have that um, secret temple that I did an unboxing on and I have um, the You May one that I did an unboxing of, and I really want to kit both of those up. But I also have <laughs> Magnolia's Castle that I'm still working on, and I'm doing a little bit of it each day. I have that one out in the living room, and I work on that one a little bit each day, like after dinner. And then I also have my... <laughs> this is so embarrassing, but I have my one from June <laughs> that I'm still working on and honestly I think I might roll that one up and save it for this upcoming June because that was the one that I chose to do for Pride Month and just have not finished it just because like I don't know that part of the year was so busy and I just like did not finish it and then I don't know you know <laughs> You know how it goes. So I might save that one for um, June and then that way I I don't know but I feel like June will roll around and I'll want to pick a different one <laughs> for June. I also if there's going to be a mermaid event coming up I have a mermaid canvas that I want to do. I actually have a good canvas for Pride Month already in my stash. Uh, so who knows, <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, finishing this color and then we will shift over to sparkle grams. So, um, I think I'm done with this color. So if you don't know what sparkle grams are, if you're new to the channel, sparkle grams are my version of friend mail. And it's just a little uh, way for me to pick somebody to send something to. So it's just a little handmade gift that I send out. And so if you want to participate, you can. There's no rules on like... Um, domestic shipping or international shipping. It's open to everybody. There's a Google form linked down below. If you haven't filled that out before, you can fill it out if you want to. It's just so that I have your information when it comes time. Um, if you're picked, that 
and I can send you something. Um, I don't share that information with anybody else. It's just for Sparkle Grams. So you fill that form out, and then each week during Whip and Chat, I will tell you something to comment down below. And then you're going to comment with that, and then I use a random comment picker to pick somebody to send a Sparkle Gram to. So last week, I asked everybody to comment with what they were looking forward to in the year 2024. So uh, we will head over to the computer and we will pick a sparkle gram uh, for this week and then we'll decide on what we're going to comment on for next week. So I'll be right back. So <laughs> I just realized that I filmed my whole sparkle gram segment and I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's what happened. I went to last week's Whip and Chat. You can see here, this is the Whip and Chat from 110 2024. And in last week's Whip and Chat, I had asked everybody to comment and let me know what they were looking forward to in the year 2024. So if, uh, you know, if you commented with what you were looking forward to in 2024 and you had filmed the, or you had filled out the Google form down below, uh, that means you're signed up for Sparklegrams. So I grabbed our link and I came over to the random comment picker. Oh, there's an ad. You can see here that Nancy, <laughs> Nancy was picked for a sparkle gram. You can see here I picked her on 117.24 at 7.29 a.m. And we had a total of 24 entries. So Nancy is the winner. Congratulations, Nancy, for our sparkle grams. And her comment was, Lexi, so glad to hear that you are okay. Thrift shopping is awesome. It's like a treasure hunt. I agree. I love hunting for little treasures. <laughs> she said, enjoyed your chat. Looking forward to many more. Loving the intro music. In 2024, I am looking forward to the retreat. Me too. I'm so excited. Nancy and I are both going to the same retreat, so that will be very fun. So thank you so much, Nancy, for uh, commenting and thank you to everybody who always comments and likes and everything. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I apologize. I did not, uh, capture the random comment picker. I will make sure to do that next time, but so we need to pick something for everyone to comment on for next time. So go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what diamond painting you want to kit up next. Or if you're not doing a diamond painting, comment down below and let me know what craft project you are planning on working on next. And I will pick a Sparkle Grim recipient for next week as well. And make sure you filled out the Google form if you wish to participate. If you've already filled it out once, you don't have to fill it out again. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing, all of those things. I really appreciate it. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.